right, this is your fair warning. This is a spoiler alert. This is the mystery box number two from Osworn. If you have not played it and are going to play it in the future, do not look at this. This ruins the game. This is your fair warning. Turn away, look away, close out the video. I don't... Just give you a fair warning. Well, you stayed and looked, and this is it. This is going to be mystery box number two with the Satter. Very awesome looking miniature, not really a miniature, more like a model. Uh, first off, as always, I want to thank the YouTube members. You guys are amazing for all your contribution. You guys help make this channel possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're a first time watcher or you've been a long time lurker, hit that subscribe button. Doesn't hurt. Uh, I'm going to teach you a pretty easy way to paint this. We could spend 40 hours on this thing easily, but I'm going to try and get you in and out in a couple. Without further ado, let's go. All right, the first thing you're going to want to do is scrape off all of those nasty mold lines. Make sure you check the description below for a full paint list. I have links to everything I use. Just a ethics warning. I do get about a fraction of a penny from every sale. It does help the channel, but it's really nothing that I get from it. Once you're satisfied with all your mold lines scraped off, hit that airbrush because we're going to be using an airbrush on this miniature this is how we're going to bring this thing to life so you're going to need an airbrush again check that description below you can order one from amazon we're going to hit that with a black primer first color we're going to be using on this black covered miniature is that xerxes purple now get it into your airbrush and then we're going to use some air, uh, airbrush thinner to get it going, get the juices flowing and have our thing. Now don't empty out your pot after you do this. We're going to be mixing our colors together in this pot to create the highlights. Now we're going to use this color all over our miniature, the face, the body, the arms, the hooves area, the legs, everything. You just do not want to get it onto the... Um, staff that our monster is holding or you do not want to get it on the base so be a little bit careful but go ahead and hit those whole areas and after every segment we're going to look at it over so you can pause it and stare at it and see did I get this area did I not get this area Next we're going to take some Dichala, I think that's how you say it, lilac, and we're going to mix that into the pot we already have. One brush full, mix that in there, and we're going to spray it all over. Now we're going to start creating our gradient of highlights. We're going to want to hit this from above. You're not going to want to get every single area on our model. We want to really get this on the areas that are uh, looking into the sun. Now I don't think there is any sun in Osworn. If there is, doesn't seem like there's any bright sunny days so it's only cloudy but imagine if the sun was looking from above and shining down on our model that's the way we want to do it that's the way we want to spray this model now when using your airbrush do not get trigger happy very small subtle bursts of paint do not overdo it you don't want to continue stream you want very easy nice paints that you want to come out. You don't want to overdo it. Take your time on this. This is the longest portion of painting this miniature. So do not try and rush this. Now 
Next, take some pink horror and mix it into the same pot. Now you're creating like this smorgasbord of colors and this is how we're building the gradients, trying to match that card art as much as possible. Now staring at your card art, we wanna start building up those pink gradient colors. Now we're gonna focus on our thighs, our face, our arms, uh, a little bit on the chest. Again, we're using very light pressure on our airbrush, just building up those highlights. And the airbrush does a fantastic job of making a gradient of color without blending it in. That's the purpose of this. And this is why it's so crucial to have one of these on these large models. And as you can see, I'm really focusing on the raised areas of this miniature one, a little bit on the chest, some of the thighs. You can see the gradient from the black to the purple to now to the pink, and that's what you want. You want that gradient of color. As our final highlight, we're gonna use some Emperor's Children. And with this final highlight, we're really only focusing on the face, a little bit on the hands, the bicep, uh, a little bit on the chest and the thigh areas to create that nice purpley pinkish area. And this is what it should look like when you're done with your airbrushing step. Now we're gonna start creating a highlight, I guess you could say, with some dry brushing. Now here on the channel, you know that we're not here to really paint things at competition level. It's to get these miniatures painted and put them on the table. This isn't gonna win you any competitions, but it is gonna make it look fantastic for your group to do. So we're gonna take some Xerxes Purple and we're gonna start dry brushing this onto the hair and the horn areas. Next, we're gonna take some of that Dark Reaper and we're gonna do the same thing. We're looking at getting that hair areas and building up our blue, purple, pink highlights that we're matching the card art with. Once you're satisfied with your dry brushing, we're gonna take some Drakenhof Nightshade and we're gonna use this on our hair areas, all of the hair areas to include on the arms, legs, um, chest area, all of that, and on the face. We're also gonna use this on the horns as well, and we're gonna use this selectively, just painting in the recesses of the face to create some depth on the face.
While that step is drying, we're gonna take a dry brush, a big makeup brush that I ordered off of Amazon, and we're gonna use some Mechanicus Standard Gray onto our spear with our human on there. Now, I'm not gonna spoil why that human's on there, but you'll find out once you play the game, which is fantastic. They did a great job in this game. Can't, can't say enough about how amazing this game is and how well they did. Now, I'm not sponsored by them. I just appreciate good, awesome games. Next, being very, very gentle with this step, we're gonna take some white and we're gonna dry brush these rocks, the rest of the base, and our spear with our human on there. Uh, be very gentle with this, don't go overboard. You want white, but you don't want too much white. Just be gentle. We're also gonna use this on our eyeball as well. So use this on the two pupils that you'll see here in a second. Next, we're gonna take some Bad Moon Yellow and we're gonna put that into the eye sockets of our white eyes. This is a contrast paint, fantastic. You could use some Lamenters Yellow, but they don't make that anymore. So if you have that still, which I do, but I figured most people could use this, so I use this. Once your wash is dry, hit that again with some Dark Reaper, or sorry, Rust Gray now. You can use Dark Reaper, then Rust Gray if you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, and then we're going to use this onto the hair areas. Be very careful on the small patches. Use a smaller dry brush as well. And as a final highlight on our hair and our horns, Fenrisian Gray, do that very gently don't overdo it just a little bit on the top just to get some of that highlight of maybe the moon or maybe the sun's poking out for a hot second or this clouds aren't that thick that day and it's just a very gentle dry brush the t'challa lilac again i don't know how to say it maybe that's it maybe it's not i don't know maybe somebody can correct me in the comments i don't know uh, use that on the horns and a little bit on the hair as well, just to give it a little bit more of that purple depth. And if you want to do just a little bit more to push a little bit farther, you can use a little bit of white. Looks okay. You can or cannot do this step if you want. And sticking with our white, we're going to put just a little bit of white on that middle of the pupil in our eye. You can see me brushing it off with my thumb. I got a little bit too much on there. Just be very careful with this if you want to put a little bit of kind of translucency in there, I guess you could say. All right, switching gears a little bit, we're going to move to the, our little cross area that our human's hanging on to. And we're going to use some Skeleton Horde on all of our skulls. There's one on top, sorry, three on top of By Our Human. And there's also one or multiple on the belt of our monster as well. For our little flags, capes, whatever they are, on our spear we're going to use some Bilal Red and this is why it's so important to do the dry brushing onto this portion of the miniature. The contrast paints do the work for you with the undertone of the gray and the white that you dry brushed on there. You really don't have to do anything. You could do some highlights if you want but it's not necessary as it is already looking fantastic and it's quick to do. For all of our rope areas, we're going to use some snake bite leather, and good news is we're coming down to the wire here. We are almost complete. We're getting there.
for our a little human, and I hope you find out who that is, uh, is a little golem in flesh on our human area. For the loincloth on our human, we're going to use some of that rattling grime. And for the hair, some Templar, or Black Templar, sorry. For our wood areas, we're gonna use some of that wild wood, of course, wood, wild wood, makes sense, right? And for our cloth areas, or wrap areas, I guess you could say, we're going to use some Agaros Dunes. For the loincloth on our monster, we're going to use some Basilicanum Gray front and back, of course. For all of our leather straps front and back, we're going to use some Sigor Brown. And ours are our little human arms and legs are sticking out of our bag that our satyr has gotten into and crushed and killed. Some more golem and flesh. You can use another flesh tone if you want, but I use this. For the strap, we're going back to the snake bite leather. And then for the little amulet part, I'm assuming it's amulet. I don't know what it is. It could be anything. You can paint whatever color you want, but I went through athromatic blue. For the spear tips, you can use some lead belcher or whatever metallic color you have. And with all of our model done, we're going to start working on that base. And the first thing we're going to use is some Agaros dunes. And we're going to spread this all over basically the entire portion of the base. Now we're going to use Plague Bearer Flush here in a second. And you can mix those two colors together. When it dries, it looks fantastic. It looks how I would imagine the floor of the deep woods would look like in Osworn. Just dirty, nasty, mossy, full of death and decay. And the game is fantastic. They did a great job. I can't say enough about this game. Now, as we're doing this, you could probably understand how much time you could legitimately spend on this miniature. You could spend probably 20 to 40 hours painting this miniature if you wanted to do it at competition level. but playing this game and you realize there's so many monsters in the game and so many things that you have to uncover, you just don't have time for it. So that's why we're going to push through it and make it look good, but not like insanely good. For all the wood pieces sticking up, we're going to use some more of that Sigor Brown or whatever brown color you do have. And for this little symbol on a rock here, we're going to use some white and then we're going to fill it in with some athermatic blue. Now, this is a completely optional step. I just saw it and I was like, oh, let's just do this. I don't know. It doesn't really mean anything. I don't know what it means. Maybe it does mean something. Maybe it means something in the end of the game. I don't know. I haven't gotten there yet. 
And if it is, that's even more cool because the model is a part of the game. So, I don't know. We'll find out. And your favorite part of this miniature, because it means we're done, is the base. So we're going to use some Abaddon Black. Very nice. Well, I just want to say, while you're doing this, thank you, thank you, thank you. And again, you can understand how long this miniature could take to paint if you wanted to do a really insane job. I mean, you could paint the human that's on the stand um, the way we normally paint human flesh, and that would probably take you two hours in and of itself. So, again... These contrast paints are a blessing to help us paint through something as big as this as quickly as it is. And it's going to help us in the future because there's more miniatures to paint in this game. So, again, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you to all my YouTube members. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you on the next one. All right? Paint on!